Albrecht Dahr I Quarter Rare was a German painter, engraver, printmaker, mathematician, and theorist from Nuremberg. His high quality woodcuts established his reputation and influence across Europe when he was still in his twenties, and he has been conventionally regarded as the greatest artist of the Northern Renaissance ever since. His vast body of work includes altarpieces, religious works, numerous portraits and self-portraits, and copper engravings. The woodcuts, such as the Apocalypse series, retain a more Gothic flavor than the rest of his work. His well-known prints include the Night, Death, and the Devil, St. Jerome in his study and Melancholiae, which has been the subject of extensive analysis and interpretation. His watercolors also mark him as one of the first European landscape artists, while his ambitious woodcuts revolutionized the potential of the medium. Darwin Quartararo's introduction of classical motifs into northern art, through his knowledge of Italian artists and German humanists, has secured his reputation as one of the most important figures of the northern Renaissance. This is reinforced by his theoretical treatises, which involve principles of mathematics, perspective and ideal proportions. Early life Darwin Quartararo was born on May 21, 1471 third child and second son of his parents, who had between 14 and 18 children. His father, Albrecht Darwin Quartere the Elder, was a successful goldsmith, originally named Arta Cube C, who in 1455 had moved to Nuremberg from Arta Cube des, near Gula in Hungary. The German name Darwin Quartere is a translation from the Hungarian, Arta Cube C. Initially, it was Tarwan Quartere, meaning doormaker, which is Arta Cubedes in Hungarian. A door is featured in the coat of arms the family acquired. Albrecht Darwin Quartere the younger later changed Darwin Quartere, his father's diction of the family's surname, to Darwin Quartere, to adapt to the local Nuremberg dialect. Albrecht Darwin Quartere the elder married Barbara Holper, the daughter of his master, when he himself became a master in 1467. Darwin Quartere's godfather was Anton Koberger, who left goldsmithing to become a printer and publisher in the year of Darwin Quartere's birth and quickly became the most successful publisher in Germany, eventually owning 24 printing presses and having many offices in Germany and abroad. Koberger's most famous publication was the Nuremberg Chronicle, published in 1493 in German and Latin editions. It contained an unprecedented 1,809 woodcut illustrations by the Wolge Mud Workshop. Darwin Quartere may well have worked on some of these, as the work on the project began while he was with Wolge Mutt. Because Darwin Quartere left autobiographical writings and became very famous by his mid-twenties, his life is well documented by several sources. After a few years of school, Darwin Quartere started to learn the basics of goldsmithing and drawing from his father. Though his father wanted him to continue his training as a goldsmith, he showed such a precocious talent in drawing that he started as an apprentice to Michael Wolgemut at the age of 15 in 1486. A self-portrait, a drawing in Silver Point, is dated 1484 a year old when I was a child, as his later inscription says. Wolgemut was the leading artist in Nuremberg at the time with a large workshop producing a variety of works of art, in particular woodcuts for books. Nuremberg was then an important and prosperous city, a center for publishing and many luxury trades. It had strong links with Italy, especially Venice, a relatively short distance across the Alps. Wonder Joy and Marriage, after completing his term of apprenticeship, Darwin Quartere followed the common German custom of taking Wonder Jari a Euro and Effect Gap years a Euro in which the apprentice learned skills from artists in other areas. Darwin Quartere was to spend about four years away. He left in 1490, possibly to work under Martin Skongwa, the leading engraver of Northern Europe, but who died shortly before Darwin Quartere's arrival at Coma in 1492. It is unclear where Darwin Quartere traveled in the intervening period, though it is likely that he went to Frankfurt and the Netherlands. In Coma, Darwin Quartere was welcomed by Skongor's brothers, the goldsmiths Caspar and Paul and the painter Ludwig. In 1493 Darwin Quartere went to Strasbourg, where he would have experienced the sculpture of Nicolaus Jehert. Darwin Quartere's first painted self-portrait was painted at this time. 
probably to be sent back to his Fianca copyright in Nuremberg. In early 1492 Darwin caught a rare travel to Basel to stay with another brother of Martin Skongwa, the goldsmith Georg. Very soon after his return to Nuremberg, on July 7, 1494, at the age of 23, Darwin Quarterair was married to Agnes Frey following an arrangement made during his absence. Agnes was the daughter of a prominent brass worker in the city. However, no children resulted from the marriage. First journey to Italy. Within three months of his marriage, Darwin Quarterair left for Italy, alone, perhaps stimulated by an outbreak of plague in Nuremberg. He made watercolor sketches as he traveled over the Alps. Some have survived and others may be deduced from accurate landscapes of real places in his later work, for example his engraving Nemesis. In Italy, he went to Venice to study its more advanced artistic world. Through Wolgemut's tutelage, Darwin Quarterair had learned how to make prints in drip point and design woodcuts in the German style, based on the works of Martin Skongel and the housebook master. He also would have had access to some Italian works in Germany, but the two visits he made to Italy had an enormous influence on him. He wrote that Giovanni Bellini was the oldest and still the best of the artists in Venice. His drawings and engravings show the influence of others, notably Antonio Pollaiuolo with his interest in the proportions of a body, Mantifna, Lorenzo di Credi and others. Darwin Quartarer probably also visited Padua and Mantua on this trip. Return to Nuremberg on his return to Nuremberg in 1495, Darwin Quartarer opened his own workshop. Over the next five years his style increasingly integrated Italian influences into underlying northern forms. Darwin Quartarer's father died in 1502, and his mother died in 1513. His best works in the first years of the workshop were his woodcut prints, mostly religious, but including secular scenes such as the men's bath house. These were larger and more finely cut than the great majority of German woodcuts hitherto, and far more complex and balanced in composition. It is now thought unlikely that Darwin Quartarer cut any of the woodblocks himself. This task would have been performed by a specialist craftsman. However, his training in Wolgemut's studio, which made many carved and painted altarpieces and both designed and cut woodblocks for woodcut, evidently gave him great understanding of what the technique could be made to produce, and how to work with block cutters. Darwin Quartarer either drew his design directly onto the wood block itself, or glued a paper drawing to the block. Either way, his drawings were destroyed during the cutting of the block. His famous series of 16 great designs for the apocalypse is dated 1498, as is his engraving of Saint Michael fighting the dragon. He made the first seven scenes of the Great Passion in the same year, and a little later, a series of eleven on the Holy Family and Saints. The Seven Sorrows Palaptike, commissioned by Frederick III of Saxony in 1496, was executed by Darwin Quartarer and his assistant C. 1500. Around 1503 Euro 1505 he produced the first seventeen of a set illustrating the life of the Virgin, which he did not finish for some years. Neither these, nor The Great Passion, were published as sets until several years later, but prints were sold individually in considerable numbers. During the same period Darwin Quartarer trained himself in the difficult art of using the burin to make engravings. It is possible he had begun learning this skill during his early training with his father, as it was also an essential skill of the goldsmith. In 1496 he executed the prodigal son, which the Italian Renaissance art historian Giorgio Vasari singled out for praise some decades later, noting its Germanic quality. He was soon producing some spectacular and original images, notably Nemesis, the sea monster, and Saint Eustace, with a highly detailed landscape background and animals. His landscapes of this period, such as Pond in the Woods and Willow Mill, are quite different from his earlier watercolors. There is a much greater emphasis on capturing atmosphere, rather than depicting topography. He made a number of Madonnas, single religious figures, and small scenes with comic peasant figures. Prints are highly portable and these works made Darwin Quartarer famous throughout the main artistic centers of Europe within a very few years. The Venetian artist Jacopo de Barberi, whom Darwin Quartarer had met in Venice, 
visited Nuremberg in 1500, and R. One Quarter Air said that he learned much about the new developments in perspective, anatomy, and proportion from him. De Barbary was unwilling to explain everything he knew, so Da One Quarter Air began his own studies, which would become a lifelong preoccupation. A series of extant drawings show Da One Quarter Air's experiments in human proportion, leading to the famous engraving of Adam and Eve, which shows his subtlety while using the burin in the texturing of flesh surfaces. This is the only existing engraving signed with his full name. Da One Quarter Air made large numbers of preparatory drawings especially for his paintings and engravings, and many survive, most famously the Ptend Harkar and Cnde, a study for an apostle in the Heller altarpiece. He also continued to make images in watercolor and body color, including a number of still lifes of meadow sections or animals, including his young hare and the great piece of turf. Second Journey to Italy In Italy, he returned to painting, at first producing a series of works executed in tempera on linen. These include portraits and altarpieces, notably, the poem Gartner altarpiece and the Adoration of the Magi. In early 1506, he returned to Venice and stayed there until the spring of 1507. By this time Da One Quarter Air's engravings had attained great popularity and were being copied. In Venice he was given a valuable commission from the emigrant German community for the Church of San Bartolomeo. This was the altarpiece known as the Adoration of the Virgin or the Feast of Rose Garlands. It includes portraits of members of Venice's German community, but shows a strong Italian influence. It was subsequently acquired by the Emperor Rudolf II and taken to Prague. Other paintings Da One Quarter Rare produced in Venice include the Virgin and Child with the Goldfinch, Christ disputing with the doctors, and a number of smaller works. Nuremberg and their masterworks, despite the regard in which he was held by the Venetians, Da One Quarter Rare returned to Nuremberg by mid-1507, remaining in Germany until 1520. His reputation had spread throughout Europe and he was on friendly terms and in communication with most of the major artists including Raphael. Giovanni Bellini and a Euro mainly through Lorenzo di Credi a Euro Leonardo da Vinci. Between 1507 and 1511 Da One Quarter Rare worked on some of his most celebrated paintings, Adam and Eve, The Martyrdom of the Ten Thousand, Virgin with the Iris, The Altarpiece Assumption of the Virgin, and Adoration of the Trinity. During this period he also completed two woodcut series, The Great Passion and the Life of the Virgin, both published in 1511 together with a second edition of the Apocalypse series. The post-Venetian woodcuts show Da One Quarter Rare's development of chiaroscuro modeling effects, creating a mid-tone throughout the print to which the highlights and shadows can be contrasted. Other works from this period include the 37 woodcut subjects of The Little Passion, published first in 1511, and a set of 15 small engravings on the same theme in 1512. Indeed, Complaining that painting did not make enough money to justify the time spent when compared to his prints, he produced no paintings from 1513 to 1516. However, in 1513 and 1514 Da One Quarter Rare created his three most famous engravings, Night, Death, and the Devil, St. Jerome in his study, and the much-debated Melancholia I in 1515, he created his woodcut of a rhinoceros which had arrived in Lisbon from a written description and sketch by another artist, without ever seeing the animal himself. An image of the Indian rhinoceros, the image has such force that it remains one of his best known and was still used in some German school science textbooks as late as last century. In the years leading to 1520 he produced a wide range of works, including the woodblocks for the first Western printed star charts in 1515 and portraits in tempera on linen in 1516. Patronage of Maximilian I from 1512, Maximilian I became Da One Quarter Rare's major patron. His commissions included the Triumphal Arch, a vast work printed from 192 separate blocks, the symbolism of which is partly informed by Pkheimer's translation of Horopolo's Hieroglyphica. The design program and explanations were devised by Johannes Stabus, the architectural design by the master builder and court painter Jar Paragraph R. G. Car Paragraph L. D. E. R. E. R. and the wood cutting itself by Hieronymus Andrei, with Da One Quarter Air as designer in chief. 
the arch was followed by the triumphal procession, the program of which was worked out in 1512 by Mark Streitzorin and includes woodcuts by Albrecht Altdorfer and Hans Springinkley, as well as Da One Quarter Rare. Da One Quarter Rare worked with pen on the marginal images for an edition of the Emperor's printed prayer book. These were quite unknown until facsimiles were published in 1808 as part of the first book published in lithography. Da One Quarter Rare's work on the book was halted for an unknown reason, and the decoration was continued by artists including Lucas Cranach the Elder and Hans Baldung. Da One Quarter Rare also made several portraits of the Emperor, including one shortly before Maximilian's death in 1519. Journey to the Netherlands Maximilian's sudden death came at a time when Da One Quarter Rare was concerned he was losing my sight and freedom of hand, and increasingly affected by the writings of Martin Luther. In July 1520 Da One Quarter Rare made his fourth and last major journey, to renew the imperial pension Maximilian had given him and to secure the patronage of the new emperor, Charles V, who was to be crowned at Aachen. Da One Quarter Rare journeyed with his wife and her maid via the Rhine to Cologne and then to Antwerp, where he was well received and produced numerous drawings in silver point, chalk and charcoal. In addition to going to the coronation, he made excursions to Cologne, Nijmegen, S. Bosch, Bruges, Ghent, and Zeeland. Da One Quarter Rare took a large stock of prints with him and wrote in his diary to whom he gave, exchanged or sold them, and for how much. This provides rare information of the monetary value placed on prints at this time. Unlike paintings, their sale was very rarely documented. While providing valuable documentary evidence, Da One Quarter Rare's Netherlandish diary also reveals that the trip was not a profitable one. For example, Da One Quarter Rare offered his last portrait of Maximilian to his daughter, Margaret of Austria but eventually traded the picture for some white cloth after Margaret disliked the portrait and declined to accept it. During this trip he also met Bernard Van Orley, Jan Provoost, Gerard Hornbout, Jean Mon, Joachim Patanier and Thomas Ovinsdor, though he did not, it seems, meet Quentin Matzies. At the request of Christian II of Denmark, Da One Quarter Rare went to Brussels to paint the king's portrait. There he saw the things which have been sent to the king from the Golden Land a Euro the Aztec treasure that Turner N. Corti copywriters had sent home to Holy Roman Emperor Charles V following the fall of Mexico. Da One Quarter Rare wrote that this treasure was much more beautiful to me than miracles. These things are so precious that they have been valued at 100,000 florins. Da One Quarter Rare also appears to have been collecting for his own cabinet of curiosities and he sent back to Nuremberg various animal horns, a piece of coral, some large fish fins, and a wooden weapon from the East Indies. Having secured his pension, Da One Quarter Rare finally returned home in July 1521, having caught an undetermined illness a euro perhaps malaria euro, which afflicted him for the rest of his life, and greatly reduced his rate of work. Final years in Nuremberg, on his return to Nuremberg, Da One Quarter Rare worked on a number of grand projects with religious themes, including a crucifixion scene and a sacra conversation, though neither was completed. This may have been due in part to his declining health, but perhaps also because of the time he gave to the preparation of his theoretical works on geometry and perspective, the proportions of men and horses, and fortification. However, one consequence of this shift in emphasis was that during the last years of his life, Da One Quarter Rare produced comparatively little as an artist. In painting, there was only a portrait of Hieronymus Holtzkua, a Madonna and Child, Salvator Mundi, and two panels showing St. John with St. Peter in background and St. Paul with St. Mark in the background. This last great work, The Four Apostles, was given by Da One Quarter Rare to the city of Nuremberg a euro although he was given 100 guilders in return. As for engravings, Da One Quarter Rare's work was restricted to portraits and illustrations for his treatise. The portraits include Cardinal Elector Albert of Mainz, Frederick the Wise, Elector of Saxony, the humanist scholar Willibald Keimer, Philip Melanchthon, and Erasmus of Rotterdam. For those of the Cardinal, Melanchthon, and Da One Quarter Rare's final major work, a drawn portrait of the Nuremberg patrician Ulrich Stark, Da One Quarter Rare depicted the cities in profile, 
perhaps reflecting a more mathematical approach. Despite complaining of his lack of a formal classical education, Darwin Quartararo was greatly interested in intellectual matters and learned much from his boyhood friend Willibald Keimer, whom he no doubt consulted on the content of many of his images. He also derived great satisfaction from his friendships and correspondence with Erasmus and other scholars. Darwin Quartararo succeeded in producing two books during his lifetime. The four books on measurement were published at Nuremberg in 1525 and was the first book for adults on mathematics in German, as well as being cited later by Galileo and Kepler. The other, a work on city fortifications, was published in 1527. The four books on human proportion were published posthumously, shortly after his death in 1528. Darwin Quarter Rare died in Nuremberg at the age of 56, leaving an estate valued at 6,874 florins a euro a considerable sum. His large house, where his workshop was located and where his widow lived until her death in 1539, remains a prominent Nuremberg landmark. It is now a museum. He is buried in the Johannes Friedhof Cemetery. Darwin Quarter Rare and the Reformation Darwin Quartararo's writings suggest that he may have been sympathetic to Martin Luther's ideas, though it is unclear if he ever left the Catholic Church. Darwin Quartararo wrote of his desire to draw Luther in his diary in 1520, and God help me that I may go to Dr. Martin Luther. Thus I intend to make a portrait of him with great care and engrave him on a copper plate to create a lasting memorial of the Christian man who helped me overcome so many difficulties. In a letter to Nicholas Kratzer in 1524, Darwin Quartararo wrote, Because of our Christian faith we have to stand in scorn and danger, for we are reviled and called heretics. Most tellingly, Keimer wrote in a letter to Johann Schutt in 1530, I confess that in the beginning I believed in Luther, like our Albert of blessed memory. But as anyone can see, the situation has become worse. Darwin Quartararo may even have contributed to the Nuremberg City Council's mandating Lutheran sermons and services in March 1525. Notably, Darwin Quartararo had contacts with various reformers, such as Zingli, Andreas Karlstadt, Melanchthon, Erasmus and Cornelius Graffius from whom Darwin Quartararo received Luther's Babylonian captivity in 1520. Darwin Quartararo's later works have also been claimed to show Protestant sympathies. For example, his engraving of the Last Supper of 1523 has often been understood to have an evangelical theme, focusing as it does on Christ espousing the Gospel, as well the inclusion of the Eucharistic cup, an expression of Protestant eutraquism, although this interpretation has been questioned. The delaying of the engraving of St. Philip completed in 1523 but not distributed until 1526, may have been due to Darwin Quartararo's uneasiness with images of saints. Even if Darwin Quartararo was not an iconoclast, in his last years he evaluated and questioned the role of art in religion. Legacy and Influence Darwin Quartararo exerted a huge influence on the artists of succeeding generations, especially in printmaking, the medium through which his contemporaries mostly experienced his art, as his paintings were predominantly in private collections located in only a few cities. His success in spreading his reputation across Europe through prints was undoubtedly an inspiration for major artists such as Raphael, Titian, and Parmigianino, all of whom collaborated with printmakers in order to promote and distribute their work. His work in engraving seems to have had an intimidating effect upon his German successors, the Little Masters, who attempted few large engravings but continued Darwin Quartararo's themes in small, rather cramped compositions. Lucas van Leiden was the only Northern European engraver to successfully continue to produce large engravings in the first third of the 16th century. The generation of Italian engravers who trained in the shadow of Darwin Quartararo all either directly copied parts of his landscape backgrounds, or whole prints. However, Darwin Quartararo's influence became less dominant after 1515, when Marc Antonio perfected his new engraving style, which in turn travelled over the Alps to dominate northern engraving also. In painting, Darwin Quartararo had relatively little influence in Italy, where probably only his altarpiece in Venice was seen, and his German successes were less effective in blending German and Italian styles. 
his intense and self-dramatizing self-portraits have continued to have a strong influence up to the present, especially on painters in the 19th and 20th century who desired a more dramatic portrait style. Darwin Cauterer has never fallen from critical favor, and there have been significant revivals of interest in his works in Germany in the Darwin Cauterer Renaissance of about 1570 to 1630, in the early 19th century, and in German nationalism from 1870 to 1945. Darwin Cauterer's study of human proportions and the use of transformations to a coordinate grid to demonstrate facial variation inspired similar work by Darcy Thompson in his book On Growth and Form. The Lutheran Church remembers Darwin Cauterer as a great Christian annually on April 6, along with Lucas Cranach the Elder and Hans Buechmer. The liturgical calendar of the Episcopal Church remembers him, Cranach and Matthias Grawan Cautenwald on August 5. Theoretical works, in all his theoretical works, in order to communicate his theories in the German language rather than in Latin, Darwin Cauterer used graphic expressions based on a vernacular, craftsman's language. For example, Schneckenleine was his term for a spiral form. Thus, Darwin Cauterer contributed to the expansion in German prose which Martin Luther had begun with his translation of the Bible. Four books on measurement. Darwin Cauterer's work on geometry is called the Four Books on Measurement. The first book focuses on linear geometry. Darwin Cauterer's geometric constructions include helices, conchoids, and epicycloids. He also draws on Apollonius and Johannes Werner's Libella Supervigenti Duobus Elementis Conices of 1522. The second book moves on to two dimensional geometry, that is, the construction of regular polygons. Here Darwin Cauterer favors the methods of Ptolemy over Euclid. The third book applies these principles of geometry to architecture, engineering and typography. In architecture Darwin Cauterer cites Vitruvius but elaborates his own classical designs and columns. In typography, Darwin Cauterer depicts the geometric construction of the Latin alphabet, relying on Italian precedent. However, his construction of the Gothic alphabet is based upon an entirely different modular system. The fourth book completes the progression of the first and second by moving to three-dimensional forms and the construction of polyhedra. Here Darwin Cauterer discusses the five Platonic solids, as well as seven Archimedean semi-regular solids, as well as several of his own invention. In all these, Darwin Cauterer shows the objects as nets. Finally. Darwin Cauterer discusses the Delian problem and moves on to the Construsian legitima, a method of depicting a cube in two dimensions through linear perspective. It was in Bologna that Darwin Cauterer was taught the principles of linear perspective, and evidently became familiar with the Construsian legitima in a written description of these principles found only, at this time, in the unpublished treatise of Piero della Francesca. He was also familiar with the abbreviated construction as described by Alberti in the geometrical construction of shadows, a technique of Leonardo da Vinci. Although Darwin Cauterer made no innovations in these areas, he is notable as the first Northern European to treat matters of visual representation in a scientific way, and with understanding of Euclidean principles. In addition to these geometrical constructions, Darwin Cauterer discusses in this last book of Underisong der Messung an assortment of mechanisms for drawing in perspective from models and provides woodcut illustrations of these methods that are often reproduced in discussions of perspective. Four books on human proportion. Darwin Cauterer's work on human proportions is called The Four Books on Human Proportion of 1528. The first book was mainly composed by 1512 13 and completed by 1523 showing five differently constructed types of both male and female figures, all parts of the body expressed in fractions of the total height. Darwin Cauterer based these constructions on both Vitruvius and empirical observations of two to three hundred living persons, in his own words. The second book includes eight further types, broken down not into fractions but in Albertian system, which Darwin Cauterer probably learned from Francesco di Giorgio's De Harmonica Mundi Tot Hius of 1525. In the third book, Darwin Cauterer gives principles by which the proportions of the figures can be modified, including the mathematical simulation of convex and concave mirrors. 
here Darwan Quartararo also deals with human physiognomy. The fourth book is devoted to the theory of movement. Appended to the last book, however, is a self-contained essay on aesthetics, which Darwan Quartararo worked on between 1512 and 1528, and it is here that we learn of his theories concerning ideal beauty. Darwan Quartararo rejected Alberti's concept of an objective beauty, proposing a relativist notion of beauty based on variety. Nonetheless, Darwin Quartararo still believed that truth was hidden within nature, and that there were rules which ordered beauty, even though he found it difficult to define the criteria for such a code. Indiana, 1512-13 His three criteria were function, Norway approval and the happy medium. However, unlike Alberti and Leonardo, Darwin Quartararo was most troubled by understanding not just the abstract notions of beauty but also as to how an artist can create beautiful images. Between 1512 and the final draft in 1528, Darwin Quartararo's belief developed from an understanding of human creativity as spontaneous or inspired to a concept of selective inward synthesis. In other words, that an artist builds on a wealth of visual experiences in order to imagine beautiful things. Darwin Quartararo's belief in the abilities of a single artist over inspiration prompted him to assert that one man may sketch something with his pen on half a sheet of paper in one day, or may cut it into a tiny piece of wood with his little iron, and it turns out to be better and more artistic than another's work at which its author labors with the utmost diligence for a whole year. Gallery List of works, for lists of Albrecht Darwin Quartararo's works, see List of paintings by Albrecht Darwin Quartararo, List of engravings by Darwin Quartararo, List of woodcuts by Darwin Quartararo, see also, Darwin Quartararo graph and Darwin Quartararo solid, Darwin Quartararo's magic square, notes. References, Christine Damel. Darwin Quartararo's knack that a Euro das Weimarer Selbstbildnis. Rima Verlag, Ma 1 quarter NST 2012. ISBN 978-3-86887-008-4, Bartram, Julia. Albrecht Darwin Quartararo and His Legacy. British Museum Press, 2002. ISBN 0-7141-2633-0, Campbell Hutchison, Jane. Albrecht Darwin Quartararo, A Biography. Princeton University Press. 1990. ISBN 0-691-00297-5, Darwin Quartararo, Albrecht, of the Just Shaping of Letters, Dover Publications. ISBN 0-486-21306-4, Harbison, Craig. Darwin Quartararo and the Reformation, The Problem of the Redating of the St. Philip Engraving. The Art Bulletin. Volume 58, Number 3, 368 to 373, September 1976. Landor David. Partial, Peter. The Renaissance Print. Yale, 1996. ISBN 0 300 Pinofsky, Erwin. The Life and Art of Albrecht Darwin Quartararo, Princeton, 1945. ISBN 0-691-00303-3, Price, David Hotchkies. Albrecht Darwin Quartararo's Renaissance, Humanism, Reformation and the Art of Faith Michigan, 2003. ISBN 9780472113439. Strauss, Walter L. The Complete Engravings, Etchings and Drip Points of Albrecht Dürer. Dover Publications, 1973. ISBN 0-486-22851-7 A euro still in print in paperback. Wilhelm, Kurth. The Complete Recuts of Albrecht Dürer, Dover Publications, 2000. ISBN 0-486-21097-9, Wolf, Norbert. Albrecht Darwin Quarter Rare. Prestel, 2010. ISBN 978-3-7913-4426-3, External links, Connecticut College Collection of Darwin Quartararo's work, 
organized by topic, The Strange World of Albrecht Darwin caught a rare at the Sterling and Francine Clark Art Institute. November 14, 2010, March 13, 2011, Darwin caught a rare prints close-up, a series of short videos that explore the subjects and techniques of Darwin caught a rare's prints. Made to accompany The Strange World of Albrecht Darwin caught a rare at the Sterling and Francine Clark Art Institute. November 14, 2010, March 13, 2011, Innovated Life Art Gallery, Darwin Quarter Rare Suite for Apocalypsis Come Figures. Works by Albrecht Darwin Quarter Rare at Museum Sportel Schleswig Holstein, Works by Albrecht Darwin Quarter Rare at the Museum of New Zealand T.E. Papa Tongawa, Albrecht Darwin Quarter Rare, via Bar One Quarter Share von Menschlicher Proportion. Selected pages scanned from the original work. Historical Anatomies on the Web. U.S. National Library of Medicine. Hereen Sinbe Griffin via Booker von Menschlicher Proportion der Albrecht und Dura von Nuremberg. Java Plate inspired by Darwin Quartarer's work, works by Albrecht Darwin Quartarer at Project Gutenberg, O'Connor, John J. Robertson, Edmund F., Albrecht Darwin Quartarer, Maxita History of Mathematics Archive, University of St. Andrews, www.dura.munberg.de, Albrecht Darwin Quartarer. The Siege of a Fortress at the Canadian Centre for Architecture, Darwin Quarter Rare, Albrecht, De Symmetry Apartium in Rectus Formis Humanorum Corporum, Google Books, Melancholia I, 500th Anniversary Tribute.